Uh, so I'm going to talk about a lot of different data around the world here today and basically just want to start this off with kind of a fun introduction with some images just so you can kind of put things in perspective. You know, don't try to dive in too much into the data, but try looking into something that you think is personally really interesting as well. Hi everybody, so uh, we're going to focus primarily on the uh, North American market um, and then we're also going to look at the Asian market here, uh, looking at China and Japan kind of together, um, and then European market and then a few other details. Okay, today are under world indices, so if you go to Yahoo Finance and world indices up there, then you go to markets and then you click on world indices, you can also look at currencies which would be helpful. But that's basically where the data is coming from. When we're uh, trying to study the global stock market, the, the population, uh, which is uh, quite different sometimes than the uh, stock markets, can be different. So um, I'm going to actually kind of try to bias this a little bit towards India and China because that's where most of the people are. And you can kind of see here. And then there's also Indonesia down in here and the Philippines. Um, but there is quite a lot of other areas that we should be looking at in terms of financially. So South America, um, in general, we're going to look at Brazil, too, and try to see uh, overall what's been going on. It's about the Indian market is that uh, it's been fairly stable um, in the early 2000s, and it hasn't really started to change until after this whole coronavirus event. So the, after the coronavirus event here, you can see in 3, uh, 2020, everything just took off a lot. So it's almost like uh, at this point the Indian economy is at a peak at, that it's never seen, but yet it could actually go up even more significantly. So the question is how much more um, can it go up? Now the exchanges, um, the Euro Next is basically done out in here, and then the London exchange, of course, is done in London. Uh, but you can see that the population here in Europe is kind of centered out in here, which actually is where the exchange is, is anyway. So there is an, an Italian and Spanish exchange as well, um, but the Euro Next um, is becoming pretty popular, so I'm going to look at that one uh, primarily. When we're uh, trying to study the global stock market, the, the population, uh, which is uh, quite different sometimes than the uh, stock markets, can be different. So. Um, I'm going to actually kind of try to bias this a little bit towards India and China because that's where most of the people are. And you can kind of see here. And then there's also Indonesia down in here and the Philippines. Um, but there is quite a lot of other areas that we should be looking at in terms of financially. So South America, um, in general, we're going to look at Brazil too and try to see uh, overall what's been going on. Russia and things like that. And also just the size of the population here. You can see Moscow is a pretty huge city. Um, it's just massive here, so there's just a lot of people here in Moscow, suburbia, and all that. So we are going to look at that pretty carefully, uh, because uh, basically most of the most of the economy is either in Egypt or in South Africa, and yet the people are kind of in West Africa, and then over here in East Africa around Uganda and uh, Lake Victoria. So it is a little bit tricky um, just to get uh, a clean picture because it'd be really nice to get um, some kind of stock market data for what's going on here in Nigeria um, but from tradable companies from the United States you have to look at Egypt or South Africa primarily for uh, companies that you can actually trade so on this this is the total size of the various stock markets and we're going to go through each of these we're going to start with kind of the s p 500 covering the new york stock exchange and nasdaq and then go into japan shanghai and hong kong and then uh basically also try to look at the indian stock market which doesn't really show up on here as well but we basically look at the asian market uh first here and then go into europe uh, because the asian market is actually slightly larger than the european market that through markets I believe and then world indices down through here as well 
uh, but that's one thing. Uh, but we're gonna next we're gonna look at the uh, Russian Molex, and then you have to click on the full screen view to get the full screen view. It's just gonna take a moment to load up here. Um, so basically. Uh, this is the graphs that I've been using and uh, this you can see we really just got smashed even more probably three times worse than coronavirus um, but um, so there's certainly a lot of room for up at this point um, you can see it's kind of bouncing back now in Russia um, so maybe that's a good time actually to look in the Russian uh, stocks and things like that um, there has been a couple uh, ones that I have looked at, telecom and some oil ones as well. But uh, but in general, you can see that the Russian economy has really been doing quite well until this one. This is just pretty much the worst it's ever seen. Um, but interesting to see nonetheless. Hong Kong Exchange has basically three main levels that it's been going on for the past essentially decade, 10 years or so. And it's actually near the lower end of that. Um, you can see that... Back in 2017, it was quite high, and it's basically been just dropping. So now it's kind of on this RSI indicator. You can also see here we draw in some RSI lines here, so you can see it's you know kind of on the lower side of the RSI, so right around here, um, which basically it could go up quite a bit. So maybe even in this range by uh, 2023. Looks, there's actually quite a lot more in mainland China out in Guangzhou, and you can see Shenzhen as well. So basically, but the money is basically out in the islands here, so that's why we primarily looked at that first. But there is a Shenzhen exchange that you can look at as well, meaning basically Indonesia, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Really, the best one to look at is Indonesia here because it's just so much area in terms of land. Um, and there's the Jakarta index, which we'll take a look at here. Um, so, the Jakarta index, you can look at it under the thing, it just says Jakarta right around here. So, we'll load this one up really quick. Take a look what's going on. So, so here you can kind of see what's been going on in Jakarta, and I did this week interval thing, so we can kind of zoom out here as far as we can. You can see that Indonesia's been really doing great. Um, the coronavirus thing didn't really stop. It didn't really recover a whole lot since coronavirus, but you can kind of see what's been going on. So I'm going to draw a couple more lines here on the horizontals. So you can see there's been kind of a low level here and a high level here, which we just broke out of. And we don't really know how high that's going to go um, for um, Indonesia. It could be even up into here. Um, but even on this RSI indicator, you can kind of see that we're at a peak here. And it could peak out um, sometime this year uh, in Indonesia and then kind of drop and then come back up again or something. But we'll have to see what happens. Uh, so we're going to start by looking at the uh, S&P 500 and just looking at different versions of the S&P 500. So basically, uh, S&P 500 is about 50% of the total stock market. If you take the top 1,500 companies, you get basically 100% or about 90% of the total value of the entire stock market. So there's different versions of this S&P 500, 100, top 10, um, mid cap, small cap, so on. So if you take the summation of all these, you basically get almost 100% of the entire United States and North American stock market. For the past year, and we kind of have a recent time frame here that is kind of getting pretty volatile. So that's why I wanted to look at it a little more carefully. So you can see that basically it's been almost straight up, and then we had kind of a little bit of a correction and then change back in here that's in October it looks like uh, but just recently the past few months have been pretty tough in terms of uh, downs and ups so we just might have wanted to compare and see what was going on overall this whole time frame and then the bottom here you have an RSI indicator um, looking at some things some of these changes here so on this it doesn't look as extreme you can see that this area here um, doesn't look as uh, important as it did on the Yahoo Finance graph. But you can kind of see here, get a major down here around October. So a couple peaks. So this is just a price oscillator 
um, that I wanted to take a look at. I kind of zoomed in on the price oscillator and then we're going to take a look here and see what we can find out. So what I'm going to do is put kind of a high line and a low line here on the price oscillator and then we can kind of start to see what's been going on. So we see that this is a 1530 and I really like these 1531 ones because it's basically one full cycle of the moon or one month um, and you can see the oscillation over a half month versus a full month. Um, so we're going to look at the, what really happened here. We can kind of see some lows and highs um, that we can't quite see very visibly, but you can see that this major point here um, was actually not as significant as this one that we had more recently in February. So we're going to put a couple more points here, so then we can put this point here. That's a February point, and we can compare that to this point over here. So what I did here is basically got a uh, kind of a graph here using FinViz to see um, where the economy is. So the bigger the box, the more percentage you have of the uh, slice. Now this is actually the entire uh, market. Um, so this is internationally as well. So you can see if you just take the top 10 companies here, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, and you put these all in a kind of a section, you get basically about 10% um, of the total economy <laughs> internationally. So it's kind of a surprising number, just uh, amount of money just in the big uh, top 10. Uh, so I wanted to look at something a little bit different than what most people might look at. This is the short uh, listing. So you basically can see where people think are the problems in the market. Um, so the uh, percentage short is not a good sign necessarily. It means a lot of people don't necessarily like those companies. And you can see right now probably the biggest problems are in biotechnology. Um, and then you can see kind of the specialty retail uh, kind of having quite a lot of shorts in there as well. And then some really hot spots um, in these consumer markets. You see the red spots over in uh, software uh, infrastructure and as well as some others. So those are parts of the economy you want to kind of stay away from. Market. This is about 10% or so of the uh, global economy, we might say. Um, but still, it's a huge segment to look at. Um, so basically, what we're going to try to do here is understand what's been going on. So this is the uh, price volume. Um, and I just kind of zoomed it in here so you can kind of see um, if we take the oscillator here, we can also kind of look at the RSI. Pretty here we are on RSI, and I'm just going to start drawing in some lines here so we can kind of see. So uh, I like to start with horizontal lines and kind of rethink about it. So basically you see there's an RSI high, RSI low. And then also we can change this, I believe, if we should, yeah. Okay, so you can do an open high low close if you'd like, and then you can also do period of 30 days. And I just like that so you can see a little bit different. So you can see that my lines will kind of widen up a little bit here and kind of see where we are relative to this. So we kind of had a high streak back in here on the Japan market, which we didn't really see in the American market, um, but it actually got even higher here than in the American market and then kind of stabled out. So it could be that this is kind of what might happen in the American market. Um, so you see currently um, this month in April, we could get quite a lot of down spikes for quite a long time. Um, that would be almost a year of down and that's kind of what's been happening. You can see the RSI has been below, primarily, primarily below. Um, 50 points mark, so that means it's been going down a little bit slightly at a time. But uh, since the 90s, uh, basically the Japanese market has been going down and then it just started to get better in 2012. So basically since 2012, it recovered uh, most of what it lost. Um, so right now it's kind of at an even stage. So we don't really know. Could Some people may feel it could drop. Some people could say it needs a new higher level. So that's just a debate. Is the Shanghai uh, Composite Index. So basically, I was also looking at Trading View. Couldn't really necessarily find exactly what I wanted. So I'm using the Yahoo one just as a kind of uh, more certain 
So this is over uh, we, per week, um, and you can see going back to about 2000. Um, so basically there was a major peak here back in around 2015. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's just been kind of relatively flat. So what we're going to do is draw some lines here and uh, just do some horizontal lines on the main graph. So you see there's kind of a point here, which is a peak, and then kind of a low point here, and then perhaps another low here. So basically we're kind of at a little bit of a higher side of this if you put the midpoint here, but basically heading back down towards the midpoint in the entire economy for uh, China. So basically, but a lot of, but basically heading down. So it could even drop to about here. Um, and that would be a little bit bad, but then, you know, so that's looking like till the later end of this year, people are saying maybe the Chinese economy could be going down. Um, so that's a little bit uh, kind of sad for what's been going on here. I mean, you can see that there's basically a high point kind of a low point here and we're quite above that so we could even say that there's maybe even a new point here right and then with a midpoint here so this is a lot of people saying well things could still get quite a bit better um, relative to the 1990s so maybe people look back even further in time in Japan than they do in uh, the Shanghai index right now. So I changed this back to kind of look at the uh, RSI index on a half year 26 week and it kind of cleans up some of these static that we see so um, if we draw some more horizontal lines here we can kind of see that there's a top point here bottom point there so even in China we're probably at a low point um, and this here indicates that we're seeing even a lower but so it's kind of hard to say um, you know when we say okay things have been going way up here and way down and then this kind of really changed everything back in 2015 which is only five years ago uh, so next we're gonna look at the euro next here and just kind of get an idea so the uh, London Stock Exchange is about the same size and then the uh, DAX and uh, Swiss Exchange and others are pretty small but we're gonna go through and look at euro next first which is the euro next 100 and then the uh, British and uh, those three to kind of get an idea for the European market we're going to just do some kind of line drawing to kind of see what's been going on. So we got a peak there and kind of a low there. So we're actually kind of at a lowish point when we talk about a mid here. Um, and then basically we got some uh, different kinds of, uh, I'll just draw a couple of regression lines here. You can see, so you can kind of see we got a pretty serious up here and then kind of maybe Kind of down, so it kind of shows that that same RSI index is kind of going down, but keep going up. So maybe you know, June could be a time frame where we have to rethink about things here in Europe, but I'm going to keep it at that for right now. Just talk about the global market here. You can kind of see what's happened over the last years. The China's really been hit by about 25%. Many of these companies in here, you can see. You know, 20, 10 percent, 30 percent, 40, 50 percent down. Um, so Asia has really been hit. India hasn't been hit too bad, but you can see it got hit here. Um, a couple other ones had some problems, um, but in general, you can see red spots are like 30 percent uh, down. Um, and the American economy doing fairly good. Europe doing okay, um, and actually South America doing great. Latin America, I mean, in general, doing really good. And then even Africa doing okay here, um, and Australia doing okay, um, but it really depends on the specific company. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed the review of the global stock market. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be glad to go through some details with you. Thanks again.